So the time has come to put this 800R motor together with RK Tech's 860 big bore kit. I've been looking forward to this. Time hasn't been on our side, but you know what? We're good now and there's not much snow, so things are looking up in a let's get the work done kind of way. We're gonna put this crank in. I bought this crank the other day. It's not a Skidoo crank. It's not right from BRP. It's from a, a different manufacturer. We're gonna use it, see how it works. I've never really put a crank in uh, a snowmobile engine before. So this is kind of new to me. Somebody's probably gonna yell and scream, oh, you forgot to do something. But you know what? This is how you learn. I'm gonna do it myself because that's the way we roll here. Now, I'm gonna put this crank in and I have heard that some people put some Loctite on the bearing surfaces just to keep them in place so nothing rolls around. I've talked to some engine manufacturer and they said, don't do it because it actually, um, it's like a filler, it takes up room. And you don't wanna do that because if you have a good case, the case actually presses the bearings into their places and that's what you want. So we've got this crank. I've done a bunch of di different things here. I've gone over all these threads. I ran them through uh, Thread Chaser basically and cleaned up all the threads on all of these. So they look really good. It's not gonna affect anything going in. I've blown out all of these case halves and the cylinder head and I've blown everything out to make sure it's all nice and clean. It still looks really good from that Rocket Performance uh, vapor blasting procedure that he did. Looks pretty cool. But now we're gonna put this crank in. This is the little seal that goes in the end of the mag side. It's going to require grease in here. It's got to have a synthetic grease. Because when it gets warm, it won't start to separate and start to flow. At least that's what I'm told. So I'm doing what I'm told. And this is by engine builder guys. You know what I'm saying? I like to do what I'm told. I guess I'll put this on here. Don't put isoflex grease on this surface here. It's a typical bearing uh, seal. You can see how it's got a spring in behind it. Just filling up that little groove there. Don't use isoflex in there. Don't use anything else. You're supposed to use this synthetic grease. There we go. Now, the fun part. I want to spin these bearings so I get the, you see these little pins, directional pins. Yeah, there you go. Can you spin them for me, Bear, Jamie? They're over on this side. I can spin them once they get in place, but. Okay. How are those other ones looking? There you go. All right. Watch it. Let's get cool, dude. In there. I'll swing those around. Now on these bearings, there are little locator pins here. And they sit inside these little grooves here. That's to keep the bearing from spinning as the crank rolls around in there. I want to make sure that they're pressed right into place. Because if they're not, they're going to move. We've got this isoflex grease. There's 50 grams in here. Got a, so about, hopefully about half of this. And it's funny, you know, you'd think you'd just want to pack those bearings right solid with this stuff, but you don't. 
because there's probably some movement or some flow of this grease. I don't know what kind of, you know, it's isoflex. I don't know what, what it's made of. I suspect it starts to float. Once it gets warm. And when you're putting this together, you want to make sure, according to the destructions, that there's no grease on these ceiling surfaces. There's no gasket that goes between the crankcase halves. You basically just use the sealant. We're going to put that on as well. Now, this here is our other seal. I'm resisting the urge. I'm resisting the urge to just fill that with grease. Do you know what I'm saying? It just, there is an urge there. It is. I'm going to put a little bit of sealant around here. Make sure that's going to seal up well. Oops. One other thing I forgot to mention. You should check your crank run out before you actually install this crank in your cases. And all you do is you use a magnetic base uh, with a uh, dial indicator on it and you measure at the very ends of this, you rotate it, you make sure it's not out more than, I think it's a thousandth of an inch. I just did it a little while ago. It is bang on, actually. Didn't have to make an adjustment. A lot of people say that they have to, but we're good. That's kind of nice. Now, for the other thing we need to do. I've blown this out, cleaned it up. All kinds of parts and pieces here. It's going to get a little messy. This entire, like I said, there's no gasket that goes in between here, but you do need to put a sealant or a sealing compound in. And they just say to more or less come through here, put it on and then spread it out with your finger. Um, in the Skidoo service manual, it says to lay it down on a piece of plexiglass and use a little roller and you just go psh, 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 right across the top of this and it'll put it on really nicely. But we don't have a piece of plexiglass and a roller. So I'm using my, I'm using the finger trick. sure that this still turns. And that water pump gear has to align too. So I'm spinning this and I see that water pump gear is actually moving. There we go. Now. I need a gasket. Right there, Martha. There we go. There we go. Uh, just like everything else, there is an order in which these have to be torqued down. Bring them all down flat.
Have you hugged your motor today? I always like saying that when I put motors together. Now we're just doing this in two steps, kind of like the first half here. There's Keely. How's it going there, buddy? Good. Everybody's wondering where you are. Where's Keely? We don't get to see Skittles. Skittles isn't out riding. <laughs> we're planning some, we're planning a trip right now. We just got to go to where the snow is. Now the second pass. I forgot to put oil in the water pump housing because I'm doing the oil delete on this. A lot of you don't like that, but you know what? I do it. I don't mind pre-mixing oil. I can make adjustments if I need to and I don't have to rely on a oil pump. So I'm gonna just pop this off and I'm gonna get that oil in there. I got lots in there now. Oopsie. That'll be it. When you use the oil delete, you end up using a little bottle like this as well. It connects into this little tube right here, and then uh, you'll end up putting more into it. It'll fill itself right up. It does eventually start to use up the oil a little bit. You know, I don't know if it squeezes in through the seals or whatever, but it does work its way out. So you want to make sure that you have that little fill bottle. Polaris engines are a little different. You can just cap them right off because of the way that they, I think there's a little bit of porting inside there for oil passages. It'll, uh, well, depending on the engine you're using, of course. It'll make its way around. All right. There we go. Oh, I like that. That is the base gasket. Looks good. These new bearings. Now, one thing that's really important, before you install your pistons inside these cylinders, you gotta check for ring end gap. Now if these aren't set right, when the rings heat up, they're gonna sort of start to bulge inside the cylinder and that's where you're gonna run into your issue. You just pop your ring inside. Can you see that? Press it down in there. Then use feeler gauge. Lots of room. Let's see how big it gets. So the 18 fits in there, no problem. Just curious. 20 won't. 18 does. Perfect. That's gonna go with that one. Kelsey has these pistons specially made just for RK Tech. You can't get them anywhere else. The Wozner pistons. What I have in my 827 big bore and I love them. I love them a lot. I do have 18 tau. Got 19 as well, so we're good there. You two fellas stay with that piston. And then, and they need to go on this side.
not as important about staying with the piston as it is staying with the cylinder. You want to push it in far enough that that's where the actual piston is going to be rolling around in there. All rings are a little different. It says top right there. And you can usually tell which the top is by these little indents and how they fit around that ring or um, the ring groove and the pin there itself. What are you doing with that little spinny thing? Hmm? That little spinny thing you're doing there, what's that? Explain it. I don't know, that's just what they did at Boondocker. <laughs> well, that's what I do now. It just looks kind of cooler. Doesn't really make a difference. All right. So there's that. Ring end gap is checked. Now, these are our little sir clips. What I usually do is this. And hold on. My hands get a little dirty for this, but it's all good. I usually take, you can either put these openings for these sir clips at 12 o'clock or 6 o'clock. This one here, I'm going to go at 12 o'clock. I usually just place it inside the inside groove. I squeeze it together. Now it's in there. And that's it. And just look around, make sure that it is actually inside that groove, and it is. I just want to see something. Perfect. So this one is going there. This one, there's a little arrow indicating the exhaust port, that's where it goes. And it always makes sense because where your rings line up, they can't be near an exhaust port or else they'll bulge and they'll blow out. And you don't want that to happen. So, here we go. Get these in here. These circlips certainly aren't like the ones on the Skidoo pistons. They're a lot easier to put in. The skidoo pistons, not so easy. There's a little special tool you can get for those. Make life easier. There, 12 o'clock. Perfect. There's that. Now, go in here and clean out these rod ends here. I put some. This is assembly lube. Some people just use oil. I use it because I have it. Let me give you that all up. Then, cover the bearings too. This is for that initial fire up. When you fire this thing up, you want to make sure there's a lot of lubrication in here because parts are going to start moving before the gas and oil mixture starts to hit these bearings. Like that. Yeah, I'm a little messy. It's all good. Okay. You want to hear that click when you put those circlips in. So you know you got it right. So it's easy. Uh, 
Uh, so it's lubed up a little bit. Yeah. A little harder to get on there. If that doesn't seat inside that groove, that circle clip's gonna come out. Oh, and then it gets really nasty. It'll make its way up in beside the piston, it'll tear the rings out, and then it'll start pounding on the top of there. Yeah, I've seen that. Oh yeah. Well that looks good. Let's just take a take a quick look at make sure the circ clips are in there, top end bearing, bearing, thrust washers, no sutton, no thrust washers. Around the ring goes up. Use the base gut gasket to assure a flat seal, make sure it's free of any. You gotta make sure you don't get any oil on here like that. You gotta make sure that it's clear when you put it all together. And there's no little bits of paper or anything that's gonna annoy that. Use no sealer. Install the cylinders, hand tight the cylinder. It's time. I usually do this. Get that cylinder. Get one of these. Loop it right up so it gets all really smoky when they start it for that first time. It's all smoky and awesome sounding. We can't start this today because this has to go into Jaws for a custom pipe. And what I usually do is I squeeze some in around these rings. I just do swear roll. Be on the safe side. Your rings will like you for it. They say, hey, thanks, Louie. Thanks for the goo. <laughs> All right. Come on. There we go. I mean, basically, boys, look at the key to this whole thing to remember is that if, uh, if old Louie can do this, you guys can do this. I never put a crank in an engine until today. Did I do it right? I don't know. I hope so. Get out of there. Get that there. Fouling up a plug. Are these little bungs right here? I don't know if it's for a, um, you know, a part of the molding process or what, or why they have these here. I might find out a, a little bit later. But you got to make sure you use a sealing compound on that. And there's one on the other side as well. You know, I think if I just do this, save me getting it all over my hands that there. Can't forget to put those back in. Kelsey does a different, couple of different things. Now you have to send your head out or your uh, cylinders out. You need to send your exhaust valves out as well.
and then he works his magic. Also, he has a, um, a new timing or a map curve for your ECM that you'll want to work as well. So we're working on that right now. Here are the head bolts or the cylinder bolts. I want to put some lube on these. This can be anything. It'll help you get a proper torque value. Still move? Still moves. Moves good. Is the vein coming out of my head? Yeah. Hold on. Just gonna. Go. This, my kid. My kids see this vein all the time. So there we go. Cause I'm always yelling. They're good kids. Go. <laughs> now. I always put this. Rest of his little kit here. I always put this gasket on right now. Also done the uh, thread chaser on these as well because it's important. It isn't that. Oh, look at that! I got this nice new gasket. Off of those surfaces, and I cleaned up nice and pretty. Don't forget these. Good. Keely called me up the other day, and I almost did it. And he says, I put the 827 kit from RK Tech in my sled and I have two O-rings left. What are those for? <laughs> I said, did you watch my video when I installed the RK Tech in my Rev? No. Well, that's what they're for right there. You gotta use these. And on his, these are more or less clocked. There's a little X right there. X always goes towards the exhaust side, which is like that. There, the exhaust side, there. You wanna make sure that head sits down there nice and flat that you didn't have one of those O-rings pop out. Cause that happens and then you're gonna wonder what's going on. You're losing coolant or you're burning coolant. Got, don't have as much compression. Something's, something's not right. And what did he say for 21? Install head, torque to 22 foot pounds. 
22 that we can do. see that now let's get this seal retainer on a lot of Rotax has had issues with that PTO side seal coming out and ruining everybody's day and costing a lot of money but they fixed that by putting that retainer in there some companies have aftermarket retainer rings that go on there and they allow you to actually grease up these bearings. It's called a bearing buddy, I believe. Because you gotta grease these up every, geez, I forget what it is, 2,500 miles? Something like that. But four years of riding for me. A couple things left that I have to do. I have to put this water pump cover back on, but I can't do it until I get it fitted in the sled. I do have to do a little bit of grinding on the front bulkhead. Not very much, just a little bit. I have to put that on. Then I have to put on this RK Tech little cover right here, but that's not gonna go on until I get it in the sled as well, because I like to fill the coolant up through here. That way we know for sure that we get all the coolant in through the engine. Well, that's it. This baby's ready to go into the IQR. That'll be the next video. Make sure you check out twostrokeheads.com. That's RK Tech. Tell Kelsey that Louis sent you. Now, this engine, this is the 860 big bore kit. This can only go on the 800R motor. It can't go on the older 800 HOs. The 800 HOs and non-HOs get the 827 kit. This is a different cylinder design. But you know what? Talk to Kelsey. He'll tell you all you need to know about this kit, the different types of things you can get. He has various setups for you according to your budget. Very easy install. Don't be intimidated by it, boys. If I can do it, you can do it. Things seem to turn in here. I think they're going to turn pretty well in there too. Make sure you go check me out on my forum, www.powermods.com forward slash forum. Thanks for watching.